carrying on with our exploration of integration. Okay? Now, um, and yeah, and what we'll do today, we will use integration to calculate area under curves. Okay? Let's start with something very simple that we did last lesson. We are looking for the uh, antiderivative of a function which is 3x squared. So the answer is going to be obviously x cubed. Okay? If I do the derivative of that, I'm going to get 3x squared, so I don't need to define by anything. It's just as simple as that. But obviously I need to add a constant. Okay? Now, that is called the indefinite integral. I didn't use that word last time, but we call it, when we do that, we just put a function here, nothing on top here at the bottom, we call it the indefinite integral. Now, what does that mean? Okay, we don't know yet. But if there is an indefinite integral, you probably won't be surprised that there is such a thing as definite integral. And to try and understand what is definite integral, we need uh, uh, to draw this curve. So we're going to look at this uh, function, 3x squared, it's a parabola. So let's draw this curve, okay? You know how to draw this curve. Okay? It's a happy face because 3 is positive, and it goes like that. Okay? Go to certain points, never mind which one. Now let's say I wanted you to find the area between the two lines, x equal 1 and x equal 3, and the area under these curves. In other words, find, draw these vertical lines, meet with the graph, and find the area under the curve. It turns out that we can do that okay, by using this integration, which is quite cool, isn't it? The definite integral okay, starts very similar. Okay? It is basically the area under the curve, and it's equal to 3x squared dx, so I start exactly the same thing, only I know how to solve that. And the only difference is that I write down these two lines or these values of x. You'll see in a, in a minute what does it mean. Okay, so we're gonna put from 1 to 3. That face sometimes you'll see it as x equal 1, x equal 3. But most of the time it's just gonna mean basically from 1 to 3. Now what does that mean? Okay, so what we do is we start exactly the same way. So we're going to write x cubed plus c. But the difference now, okay, I just want to use the same way I write it, yeah? The same, what we're going to do now is substitute, instead of x, 1 and 3. And normally we write it here for some reason on the other side. Okay, I don't know why, that's just how we do it, okay? So we, if the answer for indefinite integral is a function, Okay, with an x, the answer for definite integral is actually a number. Because we're going to go and substitute instead of x these two values. And how are we going to do it? Okay, I'm still need to show you what does that mean. So what we're going to do, we're going to substitute the number at the top. So we're going to write 3 cubed plus c. Okay, minus, and now we're going to substitute the uh, value at the bottom. Okay, so we're going to write 1 plus c. Okay? You see what we've done? We just substitute the 3 and the 1 and we found the difference between them. The top value minus the smaller value. Now sit, check what happened. Okay? We got 3 cubed which is 27 plus c minus 1 cubed minus 1 minus c. Check out what happens. The constant always evaporate. Why is it evaporate? Because the constant doesn't depend on the, on the x. It's just a constant. That's what a constant is. It doesn't depend on the x. So whatever numbers you got for the x here, the c will remain the c and it will always cancel out. So in this case, the answer is 26. What does that 26 mean? Okay. 26, it turns out, is the area under this curve between these two vertical lines, 1 and 3. Now notice here, I'm not telling you why. I didn't prove that to you. I just said, I just said, yeah, I just said that the area under the graph is in fact the definite integral. Okay? You've got, I'll, I'll repeat that. You've got a curve, okay? in this case, y equals 3x squared. You want to find out the area under the graph between two vertical lines? Find the definite integral or an indefinite integral. Substitute the values and I'll calculate the, in, the definite integral. And that's the answer. Okay? So again, I want to make it very clear what's the difference between indefinite and definite because it looks very similar and it starts the same. When I find, trying to find the indefinite integral of a function, 
I get another function. Then I can't try to find the definite integral of a function like here. The answer is actually a number. It has to be a number because we said that the definite integral is the area on the graph. For now, we're just going to learn and practice that. Next week, I will prove to you, I'll explain why is the, in the, or the definite integral in fact the area under the graph. I will prove that to you and that's very cool. But for now, let's just get used to it. Let's start with some examples. Okay, so now we're going to leave areas for a minute and we're just going to focus on this new tool that we learned, okay? Definite integral. It looks just like indefinite integral, but we've got these two numbers. So, what is the definite integral between 0 and 3 or 4x cubed? So, the answer is going to be x to the power 4 plus c, plus c, plus a constant. And now, because we're not just calculating indefinite, we're calculating definite integral, we're going to substitute the 0 and the 3. Okay? So, we're going to put in the 3 first. Remember, we always start with the top one. It doesn't have to be the highest number, but it's the one on the top. So, it's going to be 3 to the power 4 plus c minus. 0 to the power 4 plus c. Okay? Again, you can see that the c, the, can, the constant just cancels out. So well, the answer is 3 to the power 4, whatever it is. 81? No. Yeah, it is 81. Okay? Now, from now on, okay? From now on, if you don't mind, I'm not going to write the constant anymore. There's no point writing the constant even here because we know it's going to cancel out. Okay, so the indefinite, I can write it the indefinite over here, but when I don't need to write the C over here. Okay? I don't even need to write it over here because it's always going to cancel out. That constant is always going to cancel out. If I didn't write the constant here, okay, it will still work out the same. But you don't need to. Okay, just for definite integral. For indefinite integral, you have to keep on writing. Okay, so let's do this one. Okay. Now here we've got a sum of functions, so I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to write it again. What's, what's the, I'll write down the integral of this one. What's the integral of this one? It's going to be x cubed, okay? I need to have a 5 here after I do the derivative, but because I have a 3 here, I need to divide by 3. So then I'll mul uh, multiply the 3, divide by 3 will be cancelled, and I'll have 5x squared, okay? Minus 1, it's worthwhile remember the integrals of these constant numbers, it's simply going to be x. Okay? So, if the question was just find the definite, indefinite integral, I'll write that plus a c, okay, plus a constant. So now I don't move me to that constant, and I'm finding the definite integral, so I'm going to put these two values of the x, 1 and 4, and I just substitute them. So we start with the highest, not the highest number, the one on top, okay? So it's going to be 5 times 4 cubed divided by 3 minus 4. So I wrote all that business, substituting 4 instead of x, minus brackets. Do the same thing, but now substitute 1. Okay? So 5 times 1 cubed divided by 3 minus 1. And I'll leave you to, to do the rest. Okay? You just you calculate or whatever you do. Okay? Don't forget to write down brackets here because you might have a minus minus situation. If you don't write down the brackets, you'll get the wrong answer. Okay? Let's do another one. Right. So I'm going to write down the function. Okay? What's the derivative of 2? It's 2x. Right? Or well, the integral of 2 is 2x. If I do the derivative, the answer will be 2. Okay? Now, you know what? It's probably worthwhile to convert always the square root. Okay, I've got 1 over square root, so let's do it again. So we'll say the integral from 1 to 4, okay, 2 minus, instead of 1 over square root of x, I'm going to write x to the power of minus half. Okay? Is minus, because it's at the bottom, okay? dx. And that's going to be equal to, okay, now I can write down the function. That will be 2x. Let's have a look at this. Okay, what will be the power of x here? Okay, it's going to be 1 more than minus half. In other words, in other way, a half. x to the power of a half. Okay? Now, next thing I need to do, I need to divide by half. Because half times, or divide by half will give us uh, um, uh, that 1. But then I've got a minus here, so it needs to be minus 2. Okay? And I'll just do it quicker. Dividing by half is like multiplying by 2, isn't it? So instead of 
x divided by half of this unimplied 2. And you're just checking that. Half times minus 2 is going to be minus 1, and then half minus 1 times half. Now I need to substitute 1 and 4. Okay, 1 and 4. So I'm going to just substitute it. Okay, I'm going to put 2 times 4 minus 2 times 4 power half. Okay, I substitute 4 in both these terms. And then I'm minusing, okay, this is carried on here, minusing the same thing, but now I'm substituting 1 instead of 2. So 2 times 1 minus 2 times 1 to the power of half. Let's just do that because I don't need to calculate for that. Right? 2, uh, hang on. Made some kind of mistake here. Hang on, 2 times. That should be 2 times. Made a mistake here. Sorry. So I'm substituting instead of x4. So it should be 2 times 4 minus. 2 times 4 to the power of half. Okay, you guys probably noticed that, right? So 2 times 4 is 8 minus. And what is 4 power of half? It's square root of 4, so it's 2. So it's minus 2 times 2, which is minus 4. Okay? Minus brackets, not forgetting that bracket. 2 times 1 is 2. Uh, square root of 1 is 1, so it's minus 2. So this one turns out to be 0, right? 2 minus 2 is 0. So I simply have the answer is 4. Okay? Alright. Just curiosity, okay? Just, well, what does that 4 mean? It means that if you were to draw a graph of this graph, 2 minus square root 1 over square root, uh, uh, 1 over square root x. I don't know what it is. It's like this. Whatever it is. I don't know what it looks like, okay? Okay? And I find, create these two vertical lines, okay, 1 and 4, so x equal 1 and x equal 4, okay. 4 is the area between the curve and the x-axis between these two vertical lines. Why? We don't know why that works. We're going to learn it next week. Okay, a couple more examples. Okay, uh, often you will be asked, uh, they won't tell you to find the in the definite integral or not, or something like that. They'll just tell you, look, there is a curve. y equal 2x squared plus 3. I want you to find out the area between that curve and these two vertical lines, x equal minus 1 and x equal 2. So then you need to say, okay, what I'm going to do here is calculate the def definite integral. Which definite integral? Well, the definite integral of that function, 2x squared plus 3. Okay? And then what will be the limits? What what will be the, uh, the line? What will be the values of x between minus 1 and 2? Okay? And then we put dx. Not forgetting that dx. We'll see what that dx exactly means. And we're going to calculate it. Okay? So that's going to be x cubed. Right? From x squared to x cubed. We need to have 2 here. And we need to divide by 3. Plus 3x. And remember, I don't need that constant. Because that constant cancels and it cancels out anyway. I just need to put these values of x minus 1 and 2. Okay? And then I just substitute it. Okay? So we'll start with the one at the top, the, lo uh, the upper limit. So 2 times 2 cubed divided by 3 plus 3 times 2 minus, and now I'll put the lower limit. Okay? 2 times minus 1 cubed divided by 3 plus 3 times. Minus one. I don't really remember to put these brackets, otherwise I will get wrong answers. Yeah. Um, I'll write the answers here. So two times that's sixteen. Sixteen over three plus six. Two times two six minus. Uh, and I'll write here two minus one cube is minus one, so it's minus two thirds. Oh, sorry, not minus two. Yeah, it is minus two thirds. Uh, minus three. I think you can manage from here, right? You can use a calculator or whatever, you just add all these numbers. Voila, we got the areas of under the graph. Let's move on. Okay, next example, we've got another parabola, and one we want to find again the area between uh, 0 and minus 2, where they are also the x intercepts. Okay? So the same thing, okay, I'm, to find the area, I'll find the definite integral 
between minus 2 and 0, right, because I drew minus 2 and 0, yeah, of, uh, of the function x squared plus 2x, oops, 2x dx, okay? So we're going to write that down, okay, x squared used to be in a class like x cubed divided by 3, just to make sure we don't have any constants, plus x squared, okay, that will become g, uh, 2x, I don't need, I ditched the constant, don't need it now, I write that down, I put these two values, and now I just need to substitute 0 and minus 2 in the x's, okay? So let's put 0, okay? So, look, 0 cubed divided by 3 plus 0 squared, the answer is going to be 0, isn't it? Because I only have x's here. 0 cubed over 3, 0 squared, it's all 0. So I just have that one, okay? So I'm going to put minus 2, so it's going to be minus 2 cubed divided by 3 plus minus 2 squared. And don't forget there's all minus here. Right, let's find that. Okay, so that's going to be minus. Let's find the brackets. Minus 2 cubed is minus 8. Minus 8 over 3, minus 2 squared plus 4. Okay, let's, let's figure it out all the way. You'll see why in a second I'm being actually not lazy and going all the way again. Right, so we've got that minus. We'll do a 3, so it's going to be minus 8 plus 12, right? Divided by 3. Okay, so we get minus, what is minus 8 plus 12? It's 4. So the answer is minus 4 over 3. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Minus 4 over 3. Okay, why is that a problem? I thought we were calculating area under the graph. How can area be negative? Can you think of an idea why we a negative area? Okay. First of all, if they ask you to calculate the area under the graph, that's the question, calculate the area under the graph, then you must say, okay, the area is 4 over 3. Don't write down minus 4 over 3. So why did we get a minus here? Did we do a mistake? No, we didn't do a mistake. Okay. The reason why we got a negative answer, I'm sure some of you guessed, the area is under the x-axis. So it turns out my areas also have a sign. If they're above the x-axis, they're positive. If they're below, they're negative. And that will become a little bit more clear when we learn why these indefinite or definite integrals are actually areas next week. Let's move on to the next example. Okay, last example, uh, we've got a cubic function, y equal x cubed. And it turns out it looks like that. And we want to find out the area that is between the curve and the x-axis between minus 1 and plus 1. Okay, by now I think you know what we're going to do is calculate the area. We have to uh, find out the definite integral, okay, x cubed dx, between minus 1 and 1. Okay, no problem, okay. x cubed in the past life used to be x power 4. We divide it by 4. So when I multiply 4, divide by 4, it gives us 1. Okay, I don't need the constants. So what I do need to do is put these lower and upper limits, minus 1 and 1. And now I just substitute. So, substitute 1. So, 1 power 4 divided by 4 minus, okay, and now I'm going to put minus 4, minus 1 instead of 8. So, minus 1 to the power 4 divided by 4. Okay, so the answer is a quarter. Minus 1 to the power 4 is plus 1. So, it's minus 1 over 4. Hmm, so we're getting area 0. Okay, how can an area be zero? Clearly, it's not zero. Okay? But I think you know, some of you know the answer. Why are we getting zero? Well, because on the positive side, the area is above the graph, which we know it's positive area. And the negative x's, the area is negative because it's under the graph. So if I ask you to, if I ask you to calculate the area between the curve and the x-axis and you write zero, I'm afraid you get the wrong answer. What we got to do is get a divide. We've got to find out the area between uh, 0 and 1. Okay? And then we've got to find out the area between minus 1 and 0, which will be negative, but then we convert it to positive, and we get the right answer. What does that mean? Okay? So I need to do, I start the same. I need to find out the definite integral of x cubed dx. But we're going to split these two uh, vertical lines in two regions, split it to two regions. We're going to find from 0 to 1, 
And then we're going to do the same integral from minus 1 to 0. We split it. Okay? So I'll find out the area from here to here and the area from here to here. Okay? Right. I will get, I will straight away go up to here. Okay? It's x power 4 divided by 4. But now we're putting 1 and 0. Okay? From 0 to 1. So it's going to be 1 power 4 divided by 4 or minus 0. Because if I put it 0 to 0. Okay? So the answer here will be a quarter. Okay. And now I'll do the same thing, but for these upper lower limits, so from minus 1 to 0. Before I calculate, can you guess how much it is going to be? Okay. I think some of you would have guessed right. Okay. So 0 power 4 divided by 4 minus, minus 1 power 4 divided by 4. Okay. This is 0 minus... This is a quarter, so minus a quarter. The answer is minus a quarter. Okay? I think you guessed it because obviously there's some kind of symmetry here, isn't it? The area here is a quarter. The area here will be a quarter as well. I get a negative sign, obviously, because it's under the root. So what is the answer? Give it a finish up in red. What is the area? The area is going to be from 0 to 1, it's going to be a quarter. From minus 1 to 0, it's not going to be minus quarter. If I'm adding minus quarter again, it's going to become 0. We know the area is not 0. So I need to change that to the positive. Area is always positive. Okay? So it's going to be plus quarter. And the answer is going to be half. Okay? Just check. Yeah, all good. That's it, guys. You can do now exercise 2.1. Have a lovely day. Good luck.